There is Julianne Zussman, the former Canadian international. She will be on the whistle, aided by Shanda Asmus and Christine Lovett from Canada. And we have Chris Asmus as the television match official. But here we go. Match number five of the 2023 Pacific Four World Rugby Championships. It's New Zealand kicking off in their traditional black jerseys. The ball is bobbled by Freda Tafuna, so New Zealand immediately on the tack. As we said, some relatively inexperienced players for New Zealand, but no less dangerous nonetheless. Grace Steinmetz gets her first touch. Strong carry from Grace Nungo. Well, clinical stuff, although they've spilled the ball. Pops into Katie Benson's hands. So a turnover for each team to start this, and there's another one. So we're going to come back to the original penalty. There's Julian Zusman. You'll know we can hear her speak. She's our third commentator out there. You get a little bit of insight. And, of course, she can play advantage in rugby union. So if the team not offending doesn't get any advantage. And that's a daunting stat, Gislin. 14, uh, only the one win for the USA. The USA, they know what they're up against here. It's no secret the talent and the power of behind this Blackburns team. <laughs> But even just the speed of the passes so far in the first minute of play, you can tell both teams are right. excited to be here. here. Regardless of where this game goes, you. USA are not just going to lay over. They want to be part of this. They want to show their improvement from last week and what they've learned from that game. A little bit of insight here at first scrum time. As we mentioned, two new caps in Farungo Tilo and Nungo joining Amy Rule in that New Zealand front row. Benson, Trader, and Jacoby up against him. He's solid for the moment. Jackie coming in at 100 kgs, and she's won the penalty for the rest of her team. And it's going to be a quick tap from Rachel Johnson. There's some numbers there for the moment, but good positive play from the U.S. And there's a half cap into space. There's a nice offload. Good work, but tracking back well is Steinmetz. USA, that initial encouragement. Steinmetz again getting involved, and a big head collision there. Ball spilled loose, cleaned up by Dedevo. So positive play, U.S. are inside the New Zealand half. Strong carry from Katie Benson, who plays her professional rugby with the Sale Sharks in Manchester. That one goes wide. Looking to take the corner, gets too close to the sideline. Summer Harris-Jones, perhaps a little bit of 15's inexperience USA there. Thank you. Allowing the New Zealand to use that sideline as an extra defender. USA created the overlap really well there. They only had two defenders out wide. And this was the initial break. Kendra Reynolds. Time's off. Putting New Zealand under pressure something. to start this match. This is us. I'm going to show you a head to head now contact see, on the screen. There's the touch line. <laughs> she actually managed to throw the ball off the New Zealand player, so it's still USA line out and a really good attacking opportunity here at the 22 meter. And what we've got here is the referees just having a look at the big screen because they're going to have a look at this play to see if it's a or a high tackle. Yeah, there's a head collision. So that's technically, there's no real intent there, but that's technically and illegal. And point of contact is so here. Tana Hohaya may be in trouble there. Yeah, head on head collision. That's head on head contact from number nine, paramount. Black. Okay. It's always so tough because she's committed, but. By black nine. With a high degree of danger. Direct contact to the head. And I don't see any mitigation. I'll this show it to you one more time just to clear mitigation, uh, us, but I agree with those facts so far. Okay, thank you. Quite a process they go through. Mitigation would be was she tripped up or did she stumble before she got there, but it doesn't look like it. Yeah, you can see the initial shot. Oh. There's so nine's made direct contact. Is Correct, difficult. and I do not see any so clear and obvious doesn't come into this factors. Because we're right. protecting Thanks, the players. Chris. So, it's going to be a red card to number nine. Wow, Black. what a start. You heard it there from our, assist, our official. Captain, number nine. Iditana Hohaya. This is not a, a great moment for any international head head, player. High degree of danger, red card. It is red. We'll go back. So, Chris, New Zealand will be please. playing the rest of this match one short. I think in some ways she knew it was coming, but it's still an awful moment for any rugby player. It's never the intention of the player, but as you saw there in the replay. Defensive 10, yeah? It is dangerous. We want to keep our players safe out there. Thank you. And they're not just down to 14, but that's your scrum half. Here. Such an important role. Oh, sorry, this way. And sorry, a this key way. position on the field. So New Zealand, we're going to have to rearrange here. Okay. Move somebody else into nine. Likely someone else into 10, perhaps. Dangerous tackle. 
So there is the penalty awarded after the deliberation with the TMO. So just to reiterate, New Zealand for the rest of this match Thank will you. be one player down. Marina Tohi now. Top of the tee. Maybe called upon. Back up nine, but they're going to mix it up for the moment. In defense are New Zealand, and it's the drive from USA. So a few things going here as well. And there's the half cap. Great break. What a play from the U.S. forwards. Freda Datuno gets the first score for the Eagles. Look at the celebration. It's the exact response that you want. If the team you're playing has gone down a person right off the line out, she spots the gap. They get up high, they get the ball back, and the gap just opens up. Grace Nungo is stuck between staying on Freda Tufuna or going out if she moves the ball. Again, that's the uncertainty when you're down a player. And look at the excitement in the USA Cheers. team. Well, there hasn't been much to cheer about in the USA camp. Recently, they were well beaten, 58 points to 17 by Australia here one week ago. And the Canadians in back in April in Spain beat them 50 points to 17. So what a great start for USA coach, so Coach Ashfield. Kate Zachary, his captain. Mackenzie Hawkins looking to add two more. Nice little chip shot. Job done. So it's 7-0, the early lead for the USA. It's a great start for the U.S. They've had a lot of possession so far. I know we're only four minutes in, but they should take a little bit of confidence from that. And New Zealand, with the young team on the field, they're going to have to rally, reset themselves, which we know they're very capable of. And that USA possession coming with seven points. All that sisterhood Their that we've spoken of with this Black Ferns team. It will be tested right now. They're going to have to regroup, as you said. We know that the U.S. are a very physical team. They'd be happy to get into a physical battle with New Zealand. It's the, the skill side of play where I think New Zealand have the edge, the attacking flair, the offloading abilities. Well, there's a nice tip pass from Jacoby. Little indecision there. Janine Dedevo, the Knoxville Minx, gets her hands on and she's still going on her feet. She said two tries for her in Take the loss to Australia. That was one of the only bright sides for the USA. Some really good phases of play in the US, making the Kiwi girls work. This one goes out the back door. It was on to push it through the hands, but they decided to kick. So there's a first touch for Grace Steinmetz. Back. Coming into the nine roll is Rosie Kelly. We know she can, great rugby brain on her. She can step into 10, 15, or looks like she'll be playing nine for the moment. North Islander is going to test her full range of skills. Oh, surely off play her feet, on, the American on. players flopped on that. And if let them play on, so everything going USA's way at the moment. They're going to try and clear the lines. Mackenzie shows and gets back onto her right foot. Again, sticks it right down the throat of New Zealand fullback and Willingson. So a nervy, uncharacteristic start for the Black Ferns. You can see USA had created the overlap on that initial kick USA that scrum. gave New Zealand another opportunity. This was the second kick. And Tanika Willison just passing the ball to her teammate who was trying to work back, but she hadn't Stay quite square. gotten back yet. Come through straight. It was really Thanks. difficult to catch a pass going one way while you're running the other way. And USA are fired up for this game, yeah. and knowing they have a player advantage is a shift in check, mindset. Check. Time off. Referee's going to call check. time off. And there's a, another TMO. That's We're going to go upstairs to the television match official. I'm going to show you head contact from what the USA 7. Is. Head contact from USA 7. All right. When you have it, let us know. There we go. Trying to keep it consistent. That's Georgie Paris Redding. Is there a hint of head contact again? 
Yeah, it's coming up now. See here on the tackle, she's coming in there. Again, no intent. High tackle from but is it point of contact is here. Contact Seven. to the head. Shoulder to the head. Technically, that is the first point of contact. The tackle here. Just change the dynamic. This isn't a high degree of danger for me. Agree with that. But it is clearly head contact. Georgia Paris Correct. ready. Head contact from number seven, seven head but contact. number eight now, is, is going to be a yellow or a red as well, which changes land? the dynamic. Okay, so we have a high tackle from seven white, always upright, makes direct contact with the head, but there is mitigation. There's a second player who's brought a uh, different dynamic into the tackle, so it's going to be a yellow part. Anything to add? No yep. Great insides into the referees. You will seven. see a yellow here, and the mitigation is because the other tackler was there, perhaps she pushed her into um, the I'll tackling explain. player. It's a high tackle. It's also made direct contact to the head, but this one's different. There was another player in the contact, so it's mitigated down to yellow. Come on, speak Cheers your mind, Ms. Landry. <laughs> well, this is Georgie Paris Redding. She's the one who the initial high tackle was against on the New Zealand red card. Again, it's a shoulder straight to the jaw. Okay, just over here. Okay, thanks. The danger level is there. Um, okay, thank you. But as you mentioned, this is the art, this is the art of rugby, so on Thanks we go. Apple. But we'll be equal for an, the next 10 minutes. Decision? Yeah. Rosie Kelly has decided to go to the corner. She's wearing the 10 jersey, I believe, playing the nine role. We'll see how this one unfolds. Giving her team a great opportunity inside 10 meters. And this will be the immediate response from the big New Zealand forwards. Okay. Who's at the front here? So all that game prep she's done in the 10 roll, she's now had to immediately change that after just two minutes of play. Thank you. That's right, it's a two quick in. shift. You also have Tanika Willison out in the back line there. Oh, they shift it. It was on, what a well-worked move. Short ball, reaching out. Grace Munro, in her debut, gets New Zealand on the board. It's a perfect play from the forwards while we're out here talking about the backs and what the options are. The forwards just get to work. USA don't even challenge because they anticipate the mall and the work from the forwards. But they get off really well. Kendra Reynolds connects Cheers. nicely with Grace Nungo. And on debut, what a moment for her. Inspiration to those young girls. And as you mentioned, Kendra Reynolds with a nice touch and unselfish offload. That will give Rosie Kelly a chance from the far sideline to level this one up. Nice strike, but just leaves it out right for Grace Nuno in the number two jersey. What a great moment for her. County's Monaco player, currently with Blues, Auckland Blues, in the Super Rugby, Mordecai. These are the little shifts in dynamics. All of a sudden, numbers are equal again. Momentum swings. So after nine minutes, we've got 29 players on the field. We've got 12 points on the board. Australia lead it, sorry, USA lead it seven points to five. And Rosie Kelly's been pressed into number nine duty. Strong carry for Maya Roos. It was another test. Your first match as captain, 21 years of age, and you're down to 14 players after two minutes. It's the first sustained period of play for the Black Ferns. Well timed pass there. Oh, and there's a very dangerous tackle up high. Referee's seen it. High tackle. Six. And this one will just be a penalty. As Julian Zussman calls it quickly, saw it right away. The difference there is she's reaching with her arms. Degree of danger slightly lower. Just giving it the penalty call versus a card as we saw earlier. Well, bad miss kick goes straight down Tess Fury's throat. She has a little rumble, as does Katie Benson. First arrival, she's good. Thirty fifth cap. There's the turnover. Back on attack is Liana. Liana. Nika. Hey, do it. Good 
dump tackle from the try score to Tafuna. That one doesn't go to hand, and I think this could be penalty as it's knocked on, but the referee's gonna let him off the hook just to knock on, so scrum down USA ball. Some big hits going in this one just then. I love the energy so far. Here's that high shot we saw earlier that created the penalty. She knew it right away. Marching herself back 10 meters. Freda Tafuna from Lindenwood University. Likes to put the big hits in. That one was too high. Bind! Of course, you see that yellow check in the top of your screen. That's Paris Redding in the sin bin. Another five minutes, five and a half minutes to serve there. So it's 14 players aside for the moment. Big scrum from New Zealand. Play on, Loose play ball. On. Finally gathered up by Rachel Johnson. Just come off the... English Premiership final with the Exeter Chiefs. They went down in that one. Again, good hard yards earned by the American forwards. Front row in particular being very busy. That time it's Katie Benson. And again, Catherine Treader. Now the chip and chase from Eddie Hungatau. She's 93 kgs, but she's got all the skill set. On it and cleaned up by Kelsey Tanetti, but she didn't have enough support. Maybe didn't do enough to get to her feet. She's been penalized. Perfectly weighted little grubber kick down the field. Again, USA had the numbers, but not as confident as maybe we'd like to see with ball in hand. So they're opting to kick it down the field, and that one paid off really nicely. Working themselves all the way down to the 22 now with that kick. At the front. Look at three USA players there, all the pressure. And Kate Zachary gets out really quick so the next player can get her hands on the ball. Well executed line out. Jonah Nang Wu gets her hands on it and keeps going. A little bit of inspiration there from the big second row. Returning to the Black Ferns fold. As we said, 11 changes for wait, Coach wait. Alan Bunting. On. With virtually one hand on the Pac-4 Cup this year. He's got a chance to try some younger players. Nice offload there. From Tess Fury to Dedeval. Tackler. Tackler not rolling away. Penalty 12. against New Zealand. Five goes, 2-1. Chance for Mackenzie Hawkins just to settle things down. So pretty much a dream start, and those penalties are costing New Zealand the momentum here. USA opting for territory on each of these penalties. And if they're going to challenge this New Zealand team, they know they need to play more of this game in New Zealand's end, which is clearly what they're doing so far. Stop and go from Hungatau. Advantage. Yep, I got it. Advantage. Advantage to New Zealand. So they got a chance to take a risk here. They're going to put the Advantage boot to over. it to Grace Brooker. Just wait in front. The kick is returned, still in play. Hold on. Gathered by Willinson. The hooker midfield. Already got a try to her name, so why not? A little bit scrappy there. In the end, Steinmetz says, give me that ball, and she sets things up. So lots of options for New Zealand as they go to the top of your screen. Good movement and hands. Duplessis and Tanetti. Hold. Turnover. Again, kick downfield. That one's gone. Straight out on the fault, so it'll be a line out to New Zealand back where it was kicked. Little back and forth and back and forth here on the kicks. Both teams wanting to play the territory game. Little mistiming there, the pod doesn't quite get now we're up in time there's some really good offloading from the USA much improved from their offensive performance against Australia it was fairly stayed nice spinning run from the captain Kate Zachary and as I said US happy to have this physical confrontation the likes of Catherine Treater winning some battles 
they would have looked at the video against Australia and pick and choose which parts that went well last week, what they want to bring into this game, and clearly the physicality across all codes of rugby. USA are known for their physicality, known for that upfront rugby, and you can see it in their style of running right now. They wanted to add the work rate and that aggressive factor. Well, the, the coach talks about getting back to being big, athletic, in-your-face type American rugby. And one of the threats to that is so many of these women play overseas in the UK. He not feels trait. they're almost playing English style Option rugby USA. and not their native brand of, of being physical and being athletic. Line out. They almost need to combine the two. The players that are in the UK, Hands they up. had 23 players in the UK before the World Cup last year. That's a huge amount of athletes over in the UK playing that style. But they also need to be true to who they are and what makes USA Rugby USA Rugby. How about the woman in the orange jersey as we take a little look at Freda Tafuna getting treated, but Julianne Zusman, former international rugby player, a player you know well, but one of the best referees in the world now, been to the Olympics and uh, World Cup. Former teammate, look at us now on the other <laughs> side. Yep. She's still putting in the work. Physically, I'm up here sitting having a rest now. <laughs> but yeah, she catapulted herself onto the referee stage and very quickly became one of the top USA referees. Ball in That's the world there, in sevens and in 15s and credit to to what she learned as an athlete the work Time's on. behind the scenes the video review chatting with athletes and coaches she's always trying to get better and, and here she is at the at the world stage right at the very pinnacle here sarah cox will be in charge of the second game featuring canada and australia and a great story new zealand too slow to roll away there so henley and a quick tap again Looks like Rachel Johnson's been given license to up the tempo and carry. And carry she does. Great work from her. Little indecision there from Tukuafu. And it's been knocked on twice. Two knock-ons. First by Black. First by Black. By Scrum down Thank USA. You. Such positive Scrum play from USA. Ball. Every call going USA's way. And here comes Georgie Paris Redding for the US back on. She served for 10 minutes. Now USA will get that player advantage for the rest of the game. But they're playing confident and that must be the attitude, the mentality in the change room and the week leading up, knowing how tough this game would be. Crouch! Bind! Set! Another big scrum, of course, New Zealand have had to bring in an extra player to match at scrum time. They're one short for the rest of the game, so. You know, a little bit of uh, naivety there from Rachel Johnson. That ball needs to go out where there's opportunities. And one less defender for the Black Ferns. Those are the kind of game management things that you just can't learn anywhere else within a test match environment. On both sides, it's such an opportunity to learn and grow. If you're the U.S., the opportunity to take advantage of these overlaps that they're creating, even with when they were 14-14, they were still creating overlaps. So that's their biggest challenge right now is to take advantage of them. And if you're New Zealand, well, what a coaching lesson, an opportunity to look at your team defend. Teams will work on scenarios at training of being down to 14, but you never imagine it's going to be for 79 minutes. Set. So this is a huge challenge for them and what they're going to do and the creativity they're going to have to come up with to defend this way for the entire game. The head coach Alan Bunting talking about building depth and right through the middle. Duplessis hits the line. Perfect timing. Clinical incision by the New Zealand backs. That kick is blocked. This could be trouble. Oh, but credit the New Zealand players diving on it, securing possession. Again, spill ball. Zealand looking a little bit anxious with the ball in hand, and that one's dropped, and another head-to-head no -head contact. First one here by Black. Going to come all the way back for the Next first New White. Zealand knock-on. Scrum, white ball. Paris Redding on the receiving end of that one again. She's been in everything. And there you go, six handling errors from New Zealand so far. It's something we so saw against New Zealand to be still when they were playing before Australia we're a couple okay. weeks back. Yeah, they were trying to too, play freely here. and just not Stability connecting. The ball's in. But there's Amy Hold Duplessis. As I spoke about New Zealand defending, she goes, this is the best way to defend is with ball in hand. Player of the match last week had a big impact and she'll be looking to do the same. Yeah, what a nice offload from Grace Booker as well. The 24-year-old made her debut back in 2019. But 
that kind of connectivity in the backfield. That's what I thought would be the story of the game. New Zealand could find those spaces. Big scrum again. This one around the back. Oh, short ball. Beautifully held. Janine Dedevo inside the New Zealand 22. She's brought down 15 meters out. USA Women Eagles still pounding away. Freda Tafuna brought down. Play on. Positive play from US. Good carry from Eric Heath. There's space out wide, says my co-commentator, but they haven't found it. Now they might. They push it through the hands. Is there an overlap? That it's pass doesn't go to hand. On her toes. And Summer Harris Jones has it knocked out of her hands. Great passage of play from US. Just skills letting him down at the final moment. Yeah, this is their challenge for the game. There's going to be space out there. They used a couple phases to create it, but then when it's time to go, they need to be able to keep ball in hand. There's Janine Dedevo. We know she's a threat. Had two tries last week. And look at the footwork. Does the fullback. And then just the offload attempt. You can see she switched the ball into her left hand, but didn't have the control. Maybe not the experience to that little interplay with the defender. Use the defender as a, a bouncing board to get off and get the momentum into the offload. Summer Harris Jones, fresh off the HSBC World Series with USA Sevens. Sometimes, as you know better than most, just a little bit less time, more bodies on the field than you expect. She just lost that one forward as USA were threatening within 10 meters of the Black Front's try line. See the graphic rolling in behind the Paris 2024 qualifier. That's coming up in Canada, August 19th and 20th, 20th in Langford. And what a great opportunity for the Sevens outfits. The North American qualifying zone. So for both Canadian teams, they're up against. Last time was good. Let's keep the USA that will be there on the women's front the as they pre qualify through the series. And on the men's front, big opportunity to book their tickets for Paris. Lots of rugby here in Canada. Crouch! Boys! Set. Great shot of Freda Tafuna on the flank there. New Zealand have regrouped. Rosie Kelly flips it out. Nice exit strategy being executed here. Grace Booker doing well. Kelly has a look for herself. Short ball there. Not quite on the same page. Jonah Nang Wu. Again, that flat Flat ball. Good to see. Got a hat trick in the big victory over Canada, but also did so much great work off the ball. She was the MasterCard player of the match. Play on. Ball's out. Play on! Stolen. Opportunity here for U.S. Again, pass not to hand. Coming back in field where most of the black jerseys are. And she's met one of the biggest. Michele Tuo. Falls out, play on. Makes her mark. Another tackle from her. Great work rate from the big number eight. Last week she hit eight rucks in 40 seconds. Quite a remarkable stat. If you want to get on social media, you can see it. But USA now threatening five meters out. Lots of white jerseys over the ball. Jacoby wins the collision. Now it's released. Advantage, black offside. Advantage being played to U.S. as New Zealand were offside. Advantage. Holding up to that back foot at ruck time. Trying to go for the quick no pick, but we'll come game. back for the go penalty. Back. Offside. Looking quick tap. Georgie Paris ready. She's brought down three meters short. With the flow goes Rachel Johnson. Still going. Can she reach out and score? Referee says yes. Rachel Johnson for the USA. USA in complete control right now. They had to work hard for it. They, you could hear the sound of the tackles from up in the booth. Tackle after tackle, but she rips it out. And look at the power. Drives herself through low and then the reach to get right beside the post. The entire back or the entire line of New Zealand was all within 20 meters there on the wide shot. 
that those at home probably didn't have, but that's the pressure that USA just put under New Zealand. Mackenzie Hawkins' colorful boots. She's perfect tonight, and these are the ones you want. I was on the training pitch. She's going to go through her full routine, and you see the shot clock is up there. 90 seconds after a try. Clean strike. Clean points. Two more. So it's 14 points to five. U.S. surprisingly for many up over New Zealand. Well, we're just a, just over a quarter of the way through this match. And USA need to remember that this is a long game. They're playing well right now, but they need to stay composed in these moments continue to play exactly like they have, but remember there's still a long way to go here against a very experienced New Zealand side. 15 minutes to play here in the first half. That kick just falls short. Ooh. Knock She's on into touch. It, so it's gonna be the knock on, Let's but line out. Holly Tufa looked like she might've had a free run in. Oh, I was standing with my arms up, ready to watch her go the whole way. Decision, please. The line kick out. only went about eight or nine meters there, so a good opportunity for Haley Taufo to take that if she got her hands on it. Nothing to lose really by going for it. <laughs> Little conversation between the first two new caps, and then they're going to throw in. A bit of movement there. That one's overthrown from Nang Wu. She can't get a hand on it, but New Zealand have their hands on it, and they're attacking midfield. To Kendra Reynolds. Out. Yeah. Ball was out, Ball's so out. Scrum Half is wrapped up by Mackenzie Hawkins. No, gotcha. get back. Still got it though. A little bit static there and, and quite deep in their attack. There's Nang Wu again. Duplicy. See. Kelly sits it out wide. It's knocked on. Two knock ons. First by White. Then by Black. In Seven's environment, that might be a yellow card, but it's just going to be a knock-on. Perfectly timed run by Freda Tafuna there. Almost had her hands on it. She came from out wide, anticipated the play beautifully. And again, it's the attitude of the USA right now for me that's really the difference in this game so far. They're walking around Let's confident, on, they're back. playing Come confident, on, they're taking on. risks, which sometimes against these big teams you have to do if you're going to get a result. Well, so many new combinations for the New Zealand Crunch. side. You know, the likes of the Bremner sisters not in there. Two senior heads, and of course, yes. Demant. Stand up. So both and of you? Simon, yeah. the general's not Stay out there, up. but that's yep. why Stay they're square. doing this. Hold your weight. Figure but out who can take long, on okay? that incredible mantle. Too often you have a World Rugby Player of the Year in Demant on the bench. It's also possible Rosie Kelly has never actually played at nine before and is now finding herself there. Grace Brooker, normally at 12, now finds herself at 10. Crouch! Binds! Yes, Benny! Well, these are the unknowns you often talk about in the training environment. That's why you need resilience to play the game. There's a good movement. There's a nice little combination midfield. And it is given back to Grace Brooker. From Duplicy, so well worked move from New Zealand, well into New Zealand, ter sorry, uh, USA territory. Kelly okay, Tua with good carry again. There's that indecision you're talking about without that, tr that 10 there who's been genuinely and training all week. Rosie Kelly at the base. Amy Duplicy, happy birthday to her, Thursday. This little celebration with the team. Again, that one doesn't go to hand, but it may have gone backwards. No, nope, the referee's going to blow it up. We've talked about New Zealand being a player down. White scrum. But USA are a player up, so they have a bit of free reign on defense here. They can put extra pressure where normally you'd be a little hesitant to do so. Every tackle's got an inside and an outside cover, so 
the outside defenders getting to come forward a little bit more to put more pressure. If they get stepped, there's an inside cover right there. Well, good morning down in New Zealand. If you're joining us on Sky Sports, if you've missed anything, uh, there's been a lot happening. After two minutes, it was Iritane Ohaya who was received a red card for a head-to-head -head collision. So that's given USA the advantage, and they have taken full advantage. They're up two tries to one, 14 points to five. New Zealand the side that's had to regroup. They put Rosie Kelly in at nine. And Grace Book has moved into the 10 hole. They've had some problems with a little bit of their handling, but uh, solid start from USA. So lots more rugby here. Well, and if you're enjoying this Pacific Four action, there's a lot more to come. The World Cup is upon us Thanks, in France starting in September. Get your phone out and give that a scan. You can follow all the action on the World Cup app. So many good battles. I know a lot of stories are being started this weekend and last weekend as World Cup campaigns are very much underway. Hurry up, please. Bragging rights up for grabs in Paris. So 10 minutes to play here in the first half. Equally, if you're joining us from Flow Sports, south of the border in the USA, your team is uh, found some form that they couldn't quite get against that big loss against Australia. 58-17, they went down. They look like a different team here. And they've had a lot of go forward. And a one-player advantage, which is helping at the moment. Rachel Johns has had a lot, been involved in a lot in this first half. She gets that away from the base of the scrum. Circling around, Mackenzie Hawkins. Well, real speed of play from the Americans. You got to credit them. Kate Zachary is trying to roll to safety there, and she does. In the front row of Benson, Cheddar, and Jacoby have Jackie. really done well. Carrying the ball, Captain. asking questions, and the referees have a little chat here. There's been a few penalties built up. Maybe a warning for the New Zealand players. That's Let's three listen in. penalties. No more. Yeah. Okay. Little warning. The first tackler is still in there while the second player to arrive is going for a turnover. And until that first tackler gets out, they need to hold and wait and allow them to roll out. Likely, the person on the ground needs to move a little bit quicker to do so, but it's all the timing and, and connecting with that player. That one slightly comes off the boot there, and Maya Roos was given the warning by the referee, and what a challenge for her. Sub we said 21 12. years the youngest captain 12. normally you like to focus on your performance in her case as a second row but so many other things to, to juggle and manage with player Pretty going working. off and a bit of restructuring so mature beyond her years a great character on a bunting the coach spoke very positively of her attitude so new zealand are bringing on the world rugby player of the year in demand Really looking to control the attack, perhaps. She won't wear that 10 jersey. That belongs to Rosie Kelly. It will stay in the 9 hole. Come on, come on. Credit to the USA there for the amount of pressure they're putting on New Zealand. It's a statement in itself, bringing her in as early as they have. I don't think that would have been the plan otherwise. But as you mentioned, they need that back connection to get some momentum out there. Advantage. Parango Tilo Advantage. loses that Not one. Good luck, good luck. Again, USA affecting a lot of turnover. Ball looking for the quick pass, but no knowing advantage. they were on advantage. Go back to the knock-on. Knock on. USA scrum. So in the 22 jersey. Urahe Damant. Great attacker. Huge impact in the last game. Hits the line hard. This was the... Quick that catch and pass attempt square, that didn't you. come off, but knowing they were on advantage. Yep. Yep. And there she is right behind the scrum. And I don't know if there's a, a player in the women's game that I would like to bring on to transform my team's fortunes other than Demont. USA scrum, eight minutes to play in the first half. They're currently up by nine. Quick pick from the base. Rachel Johnson. Good pass, not the hand. Good feet. Good breakout here from the U.S. Is it going to be the giving? Oh, the pass could have gone inside. 
little bit of hesitation from Kate Zachary there. She's still got possession for her team. I mean, this is something that ball's knocked on. We did not see this level of attack against Australia. It's been a different USA team here. Absolutely. They, as we mentioned, they would have looked at that film. They are just keeping. They talked about taking the small victories and bringing them into this game. To me, the biggest shift is the attitude. Just give me a sec, okay? And Captain Kate Zachary spoke about it in the week leading up. There is demand. Barking out instructions. Duke right, is the outsider, go. and of Heads course, they're one short in the back. And you got to feel for Grace Booker. Her place purely based on positional decisions, I imagine, but unfortunate for her. But New Zealand is clearly ready to get back in this match, <laughs> get their team back going forward. Yeah, taking one for the team there, being subbed out through no fault of her own. There's a little bit better movement, a little bit more direct running. Thought about offloading, but deciding to keep the ball, keep pressure. Rosie Kelly, out wide. Stiff American defense for the moment. This to the Fayonga Tilo. Nice carry from her. Grant chooses the offload. Putting her head down. Grace Steinmetz, she's had a couple of strong touches here. Oh, big hit midfield. Michele Tua just rides it though. Yang Wu. Use! A little bit of surprise there, didn't think she was getting it. Grant keeping her feet, then the troops arrive. Can she get down? Yes, she does eventually. This is positive play from the Black Ferns. Yep. Ron Gotilo's done some good work in the last few minutes. Double tackle in the offload. Into space is Tanika Willinson, the Olympic gold medalist looking. She's got up to the USA 22. Hint of offside in the US backfield. Off the foot, play on. Play on, says our referee. Cleaned up by Nang Wu. Play on. Stolen right out of her hands. From guess who? Freda Tafuna. Balls popped out the side. Some tired bodies out there. That one's been carried back into the Just 22. Wait, four, four, wait. On. Doesn't get a kind bounce. Grace Steinmetz. And both sets of players a little bit disorganized at the moment. Steinmetz just decides to drive forward, give her team She's a platform. Got it, but it's been stolen. Good. USA doing great work at the breakdowns. Now it's Katie Benson acting as scrum half. Hi, tackle. Her work rate has been outstanding. Short ball from Taufo. Quick hands would have been good there. Coming back in field is Fury. And referee's no going to come back for an offside penalty. High tackle. Sorry, a high tackle penalty. Well, New Zealand under Thank pressure, you. phase after phase. The initial kick down field, I, I didn't Three. think it was the I right tackle. option, but it's the chase that followed that made it impactful. They got the turnover back. And once again, USA back in control, going for territory on this penalty, and gonna put themselves inside the 22. And you gotta say for interim head coach, Rich Ashfield, forcing a New Zealand team to concede that many penalties, he's found something here, and I think Going right back to the anthems with saluting the flag. They found an American style here, and they're playing that in-your-face rugby he's been asking for. Let's see how it holds up, because New Zealand are infringing right across the it's board. Taking me down by White. And it's costing them. Thank you. Referee saying it wasn't taken down by New Zealand. Play on. This is a good mall setup. We've stopped the leg drive. You're fine where you are, yep. Use White. White have been told to use it. They peel out the side. Stop and go from Hangatau. Hands on it by Grace Ungo. Advantage. Almost stole it, but off didn't. Feet. Again, New Zealand off their feet. Another penalty. New advantage. Eight's in the way. New advantage for White. At the Hangatau. Great movement. Simple skill execution by the U.S. Ten meters out. 
Still pounding away. Katie Benson's on it at the base. She's going to have a dabble. She gets a couple of hard yards. Now the troops arrive. It's her prop partner, Jacoby. A steady diet of pick and go has got several penalty advantage. Eric, he's knocked back. Now, a cross kick. It sliced off the boot, but knowing they had an advantage, they're going to come back. And the referee's going to have a word, I believe, because it's a series of penalties against New Zealand. Captain. I don't we'll listen to this conversation, but I think I gave you a warning down three here for tackles. four advantages You're eight calls. in the 22, slowing the ball down. Give me a yellow card. Sending your eight. That's too many. So I do think that's fair. There was a warning. This is official, yep. Liana Michele yep. to it. Yep, where's the mark? We have options. We have a, an offside here or not rolling here. Where's here? Just right here. So as she leaves for 10 minutes, that'll be going into here? the second half. The USA have an option the mark. Yeah, just as to where they want to choose the penalty. Either way, it's very kickable. Rolling, Chris. If that was their choice just then. Thank you. And that's what they're deciding to do here. Shot called. Oh, you could hear them call for points and then maybe wanted to go back to the scrum, but once you've called it, you've called it. But again, the pressure off your sorry, New, New, USA is putting under New Zealand. Yep. Yep. Is forcing these penalties at the breakdown, and you could see the face of Maya Roos there when Julianne Zussman called her in. There was nothing she could do about it because she knew that was, that's what was coming. You could sense the frustration. So you see that shot clock, 60 seconds from when the penalty was awarded. Mackenzie Hawkins going to use the right boot to extend the lead. <laughs> Hawkins adds three for the U.S. They've got 17 up on the board against New Zealand's five. Thank you. So the dying seconds of this first half, New Zealand will be too short for not only this period, but then the leftover time at the beginning of the second half. So 15 on 13 for the USA. Just then, do you go for it? Do you keep attacking, knowing you got that two-person advantage? Or you just get off the field happy with your 12-point lead? For me, always and absolutely, you keep attacking. I would have liked to see them keep attacking on that penalty, to be honest. They're in, the in control right now, and I think that's the momentum. you got to keep going for it. Summer Harris Jones takes the kickoff, and they're back. Normal service with this good one out, hard running, and winning collisions like that time and time again. The size of the U.S. has really paid off, and the occasional tip pass like that has produced results. It's made it very hard for the world champions to defend. They're going to get off the field. They're going to be happy with heading into the shed. Up 12 points. And that will do it for the half. So big celebrations for the women in white. And it'll be back to the drawing board for the world champions as they're down 12 points. USA 17, New Zealand 5. Yeah, I'll let you know if it's off. Yep, got you. How much time do we have on the kickoff? Well, if you're joining us south of the border, Flow Sports, welcome. Okay. And in New Zealand, yep. good morning. In Sky Sports. We had a good discussion at halftime, Ricky. But this one is all to play for for the world champions as USA kick off in the white jerseys, leading 17 points to five at the half. Oh, big tackle from one of the players of the first half, Rachel Johnson. She loves the action. And indeed, there is some fresh legs on the field already. We've seen Georgia Ponsonby in there, the experienced front rower, converted loose forward, experience of the Rugby World Cup final behind her. So this won't be that daunting. And also in there is Marina Tohina. We thought we might see her earlier, but she's on the field now. Is it more? Normal service resumed. 
for New Zealand. Lucy Jenkins gets it back. Ponsonby gets her hands on it again, her 15th cap. Good offloading. And I'm sure there'll be no panic in that New Zealand dressing room. Head coach Alan Bunting, a stranger to the pressure from the Sevens environment for the Olympics and from first class rugby. Now the chip through, this worked very well against Canada. And they did bring it in after the half. Something's been spotted by the analysts. This one gets returned by the, by the U.S. though. Going all the way back to clean it up is DeMont. So kicking, floating with the sideline. Nine bounce. Four. Mackenzie Hawkins. She's got a lot of nice touches here. Johnson again. Flat ball. Dedevo. Snappy two tackles, though she's crawling forward. Nice support from the open side, Georgie Paris Redding. She served 10 minutes on the sideline after an early yellow. Of course, the story of the match is the red card. Oh, hi, uh. Couple players down behind play, so U.S. short for the moment. And of course, New Zealand started this second half with a yellow card. Still, still over five minutes to serve in that one. So players all over the field. The ball in play looked like Summer Jones is, Harris Jones is maybe free. But they're inside the New Zealand 22 again. Great red zone possession for the U.S. in that first half, looking to convert into more points. Back door. Nothing on out wide, the stop and go from Fury. Release, Black, release. New Zealand were guilty of nine penalties in that first half, uncharacteristic for them. The inside ball to Dedevo. Well read by the New Zealand in defense. Quick pick from Zachary. Four meters out. Benson on the ball, just short of the line. Looking for the reach out as she held up. Referee right on the spot. Held up is the call. USA have come out with the exact same intensity as they ended that first half. Working themselves phase after phase down the field. Well, this was Benson. All, Looked like she might get there. Almost in, about a, me a foot out there. And then New Zealand's defense, look at the low shot there, getting hands on the ball, wrapping her up. Right away, New Zealand. Okay, let's go. So goal line dropout for New Zealand as the ball was held up over the line, taken in by the USA. Decent kick, but possession in the hands of Hangatau. Big, powerful runner, 93 kgs. One of the biggest players on the team. The props are only 100 kgs. Really good work at the breakdown. Well recycled ball. This time off the foot. Gathered up by the fresh legs of Demand, and she's still going. She loves the open field. Eyes up, heads up. New Zealand fans screaming. She decides to kick into space. It's going to be a foot race. Dedevow is up on it. Up against Renee Holmes. Holmes gets her hands on it. Can she reach around? Into touch. Yeah. That's the impact of Ruahe Demant. Some collects that kick downfield. Uh, one and three, Black. Beats one, one defender, beats a second Trust. defender, has them sliding and skating on the turf out here. Spots the outside support player and a lovely little kick in behind. And Renee Holmes inches oh, away oh. there. But Detivo gets back. Well, more subs on for New Zealand. It's completion of the front row. Pip Love and Tanya Kulunavale. Both have seen action in the first game here in Canada. Time's back on. Fresh front row. You hear the Americans chanting one, two. They want to get this drive going. Trying to get working in unison. And they're on the move. Referee's letting them go. Now they're going backwards. White's gone down. Use it! She said it was the white player who fell. Referee Zeusman letting the players decide it. The ball's there. Ball's right there. Counter ruck comes in for New Zealand. Jacoby. 
so much more presence around the American attack against the Australians. I felt they, they panicked a little bit, trying to break the line right off the bat. They've been happy to build phases against the world champions, and it's paid off here. Still up 17 points to five. Five minutes played in the second half. Final two minutes of that yellow card. So just down to 13 players are New Zealand at the moment. The dancing feet of Amy Duplessy. First arrival. A little bit of a spark good. for New Zealand. Turnover's good. Turnover is good. Three. Captain has her hands on the ball, gets it back for her team there. This time it's Summer Harris Jones who flips it wide. She's fallen, she's fallen, yeah. New Zealand player on the wrong side, but the referee deeming there's not much she could do about it. So they're going to clear the lines. Another low kick goes straight down the throat of Renee Holmes, who started at fullback in the first match against Canada. Straight through the middle, siding and still going, flipping it inside. Marina Torino, try for New Zealand. There it is for the Blackburns. Well, USA has kicked a lot in this game, but their chase has been pretty good. This time, there was no chase on the open side of the field. And the seas just parted for Kelsey Tanetti, who with the offload on side to Marino Tahino. New Zealand have made all but two of their subs. And you can see the experience of the veterans that were on the bench and have now come onto the field in the second half and the quick impact that it's had. Well, Tohino, Marina Tohino, one of the leaders, one of the veteran heads in this team. She's got her second try for her national team. Crucial at this stage. New Zealand trying a score by number 21. New Zealand within a score. Just the ball. Okay. Okay. Pairs for Kate Benson. So, Alan Bunting, his changes have paid off. Yep. Fresh legs up front. And those to the sun. Senior players he had to call on. We talked about it off the, the start of the opening. There was a pretty serious bench you could call on, and he's done that, and he's needed to do that perhaps more so because of the red card. Much earlier than I think they ever would have come on. Happy. It's a credit to USA, the pressure they put them under. When Lisa Tupuo is on the field for Katie Benson. Demant. Not maybe an HIA, the player who came off for the USA, just to check. So, in rugby, a chance to assess any potential head injury, but the offload game paying off again for New Zealand. Getting all the way up to the halfway line. Trundling in is Kalimu Valley. The youngster is so powerful on the ball. Nice hands from New Zealand. This is what we saw against Canada. The final pass doesn't go to hand. Knock on. Option. On the line out. You can see they're playing with a lot more freedom right now, and that's just the experience of the combinations coming together. Sub. Line out, okay, set up the line out. Great job to get her hands around that tackle. Two players, seven black. one going seven. for body, seven. one going for ball. Uh, seven. Thank you. Just, just to give you perspective again, last time out, it's 50 points to six. New Zealand dominating USA in Northland in June of 22. So New Zealand back to 14 players. The yellow card has expired. Everything going their way. And now a penalty. And Kennedy Simon has also come onto the, onto the field. So almost the entire bench is on the field now. Shot. And they've wisely chosen to have a shot at goal, go for the three points. So with Kennedy Simon and Rebehai Demant, two New Zealand Order of Merit recipients after their leadership of a very, very successful Rugby World right Cup there. down in New Zealand. And this penalty will give Renee Holmes a chance 
I saw her earlier in, in practice this week, hitting from 50 meters. She hit one in the Super Rugby OPK, OPK final. This one significantly less. 35 meters out. And straight in front. Renee Holmes for the Black Ferns. Hits it down the middle. They're clawing their way back. Now 17 points to 15. We talked about it at halftime. It wasn't just the player advantage that USA was doing well in the first half. They were running with so much intensity. The, the back in me always wants them to move and take advantage of the overlap. But when they weren't doing that, possibly because of vision or skill, they were still running with so much intensity at the line that it was getting them to go forward and drawing those penalties. And if the US, if you're the USA right now, you got to go back to that. On the New Zealand side of the inverse, looks so comfortable on the ball. Perhaps a bit more direction being provided by Demand and Simon on the field. A bit more clarity of purpose. But another turnover. That's been an aspect of the USA play. The coach ball at the breakdown. Now some width. Stepping back in field. Summer Harris Jones. Advantage. Advantage to USA again. Now the penalty's creeping back in. Offside. Offside New Zealand. 19 and possibly the entire 19. forward group Offside. there. Anticipating the ball was out at the back of the breakdown. That's Chelsea Bremner. Caught off there. Say not granting a ton of territory to Mackenzie Hawkins, the Colorado Grey Wolf. Front stand there. They will be able to start the attack from a set piece. 40 meters out. Line out is not straight. So a bit of a mental error, a bit of fatigue coming in. The sun has come out here, just landing conditions a little bit more hot, a little bit more muggy. The skies have cleared indeed. And so is the attitude a little bit. USA, a few little errors here we didn't really see in the first half starting to creep in. And against a team like New Zealand, you don't want to be giving these free opportunities back to them. Because now see. they're hungry and they want to get back in this game and take control. the standard here with stability. Yeah, Etsy Hungatau is going to get a breather. And on the field for her is Joe Favesi. We saw her saluting the flag before the game. How's she going to react? The USA sevens player to this narrow two-point lead. The team holds over the world champions. Thanks, Grant. Set. New Zealand put in. Bang on the 40-meter line. Nice little shunt from them. Going to the short side. Playing blind. Doesn't really come off. Two knock-ons. Going to have a couple of knock-ons there. Done by White. White scrum. I'm eager to see Summer Harris Jones get an opening here. Yeah. Get a bit more space to yeah. run. She almost had an opportunity there picking up that ball, but just ran out of space. Okay. No problem. Well, we mentioned the heat, the sun's out, but we're playing on an artificial pitch here as well. The rubber pellets, the sometimes even 10 so degrees hotter contest. when you get field side, okay. and that is the home of the Ottawa Red Blacks. I need to see space between you and Artificial pitch here. And a great shot of the scrum. Crouch! Bind! Put in by Taina Tukurafu, the Lindenwood University product. Free kick to USA. This time, Johnson thinks about a quick tap, but doesn't go. And they've asked to go again at scrum time. So perhaps a little bit of reorganization with all those subs on the field. So the whole bench has been emptied for New Zealand. Stay up, stay square. Wearing a front row injury, no more relief for the women in black. They've got to take it from here on. And listen to all the conversations happening at this scrum. Bind! Set! 
Nice kind feed. What a shot from New Zealand. Looking to disrupt. Only 14 players on the field, remember. Looking for any way to gain an advantage here. Strong carry from Taufu. She's been very busy. Half cap there. Oh, they were off out into space as they got in behind. Nice flat ball from Tim Harris Jones. Dedeval brought down. Oh, big smack on. midfield on Captain Trita. No New Zealand. advantage. Back, knock on. The ball back after that knock on. And what a hit here. This is the kind of hit that can get your team back into a match. Seven. And look at the angle. She Not comes in on way oh. from the outside. Kennedy okay. Simon, the attacker had no idea she was coming, turned in to catch the ball, and she shot out from the outside. Beautiful tackle, beautiful turnover for New Zealand. Well, explosive player. She recovered well from the knee injury last year's World Cup. You heard the comment, this is what we've done. The hours on the training pitch, this is why they're doing it. 25 minutes to play. New Zealand finding himself in the rare position Fight. of being down two points in a test match. A 14-match win streak on the line. And their clean slate here at Pacific Four Rugby 2023. Big shove, and they've won the penalty, so they can have a go in the backs. Stepping well is the original 10, Rosie Kelly. She's come back from the nine hole. And hasn't gone to hand. No advantage. We're back here. Scrum. It's going to penalize him at scrum Standing time. Up. That's good refereeing. Couple phases there, but really hadn't moved down the field at all. Stayed right on that center line. So a little something found there, perhaps, that this new fresh front row are doing the job. Right away, okay? Winning penalties. Demance has given the instructions to kick it right away. And all, this, all the subs New Zealand has made has also forced USA to make okay. a couple subs here. Sub. And here comes another. Number six. Number six. Sub. Six. But not only have they brought on sub. fresh legs for New Zealand, it's the experience. Now you've got fresher He's legs got against Lots of time. tired USA legs. Six plus one. And it's going to be Freda Tafuna, who was six so impressive one. in that first half, getting a breather. Evelyn Ashenbrooker, the, the San Diego surfer. She got a try in the last match against Australia. She's emptied the six? gas tank. Yeah, Some huge perfect. runs from her in the first half. Time really time. put USA on the front foot there. New Zealand, good movement in the lineup. Now they formed up. This is the experience. Taufu is being a pain on the wrong side legally. Five. Yeah. She's, she's fine. She's come around. She hasn't changed her mind. Yeah. Play on. <laughs> Getting sorted out. Great battle That's there. Collapse now. now it's gone down. New Zealand to use it at the base. Little touch. Kick through. Doesn't get to hand. Perhaps knowing she was on advantage collapse. from the collapsed mall. Rosie Kelly tried a little something. Didn't come off, but it won't be a problem. Option now for New Zealand. They could have a shot at goal to take the lead or touch it into the corner. Looks like the corner. We got the last drive going. Off line out. Let's see if they can do it again. Five meters to gain. You at the front? Yeah. That's your spot right there. You the receiver? Kaluna Valley's at the back there. Good ball. Kaluna Valley circles around the front. A set move. She gets close to the line, but she's short. Says the referee. Quick pick. And a white line fever. Cheers go out. And maybe Georgia Ponsonby, but a forward strike. No question about it. New Zealand take the lead. New Zealand take the lead for the first time 
And in the build up to this try, they were walking and moving with a little bit of swagger. You could sense they were building something. Kaluni Valley off the line out, comes down the channel, almost gets herself there. It's Pip Love who gets in the scrum out position there. She thinks about it here, but then regroups, gets the mates in behind her. And that's just enough. Good forward play. As Renee Holmes looks to extend the lead. She's having a look. Looks good. Yes, it is. A crucial kick. So just like that, New Zealand up by five points. Yeah, nice moment for Pip Love. Great experience there, not getting the white line fever, not going on her own, waited till the teammates could back her up, and that was the difference she needed to get over the line. The two ball will come on for good now. We did have a HIA earlier on, but Katie Benson's gonna get a breather. That one's not gathered by Kelsey Tonetti. She was due to be playing in the PR7s. That's an American 7s competition. USA, yeah, please. It was pulled in last week and played against Canada. USA, yeah, please. Let's go. So New Zealand players arriving into this line at a four-person lineup. Back, back, go back. to the backs. To Chelsea Bremner, she is a main lineout option. Well, a more conventional exit strategy that works well, except it doesn't find touch. This is the type of thing that could bring US back into the game. Get about deceptively dangerous in open field. Now maybe a bit of fatigue. These US players not linking as well as they were. In the first half, of course, playing up against 14 women in black. The red card just two minutes into this match. Well, Tupel C does so well. She takes a gamble, but then doesn't get the ball, but still makes the play. Well, this is a test of the SNC programs, the fitness, the full time trainers, the contracted players that are. New Zealand will have the distinct advantage here. U.S. player down behind play. Now the chip and chase. A little bit of obstruction, but referee's letting them go. Getting their first involvement is Joe Favese. Kaluni Valley rumbling forward. And now the box kick. No one home. This one hits the turf and rolls the way of New Zealand. Nice step there, and a good clearing kick. USA looks like they're running out of options a little bit on attack here. A few passes going to someone who wasn't ready, wasn't looking for the ball. A little kick with no chase on that. So USA scoreless in the second half. New Zealand will come up with 17 unanswered points to regain the lead. Now the combinations are working. There's Tanetti into space. Options all around. Supporting role there from Lucy Jenkins. Two to see, stop and go. That ball's been kicked into touch. It'll be a USA throw in. Okay. Well, more subs here on a hot day. It's going to be Olivia Ortiz from the DMP 21? Sharks. Sub 21. Coming on for her 16th cap. 21? For you. You're 21. 21. Sub. Oh, nine. Oh, you mean nine. I was told 21. Oh, 
Nine. 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 Thank you. Nine. 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 So important in that first half attack by USA. I know. Yeah, once again, USA making more replacements I, I to try and compete and trying to keep up with New Zealand now. A game of two halves at this point. Jacoby gets a breather if she was brought back into the side. Bobbled, and it's loose for New Zealand. It's a free one. No advantage no accruing. Advantage. Nothing. All those little things that were going well in the first half for USA are starting to go the other way. The little handling errors that we saw building for New Zealand are now building for the US. Well, this is dangerous. It's a rejig front row for the USA. Ow, and Tupuo on the field. There's also a late replacement in the subs bench. Jeff Hayward was replaced by Talia Brody very late in the day, so not sure how well prepared Brody is to contribute if she's required. Big shot from New Zealand. Referee asked her to use it, and she's got it going with the flow. Kelly can't get it out of her hands. And Rosie Kelly. Knocks it off. There's about a 20 meter channel there on the left side, the far side of your field. And two New Zealand players went, but their timing was not on. They left too early, had to stop their run, check their run, start again. And it led to the knock on here. All right, let's set it. When I say use. That pass use. was possibly yeah, on had she got it off, cycle. but just the knock on as she attempted in the use, tackle. Because it stopped. Oh, it just stopped. stopped. A little conversation there with Arena Tarina. Crouch! Two 21s on the field opposite her is Olivia Ortiz. 25 year old. Set. Important role to play for the U.S. now in the last 15 minutes at Scrum Half. Big shout from New Zealand. All sorts of troubles for the Women Eagles pack. Thank you. Just what the doctor ordered if you're a New Zealand fan. The confidence and the experience coming in at a key moment. Just outside the five. Right there. Again, going for this territory, going to get themselves a five-meter line out. We saw what happened last time with the, with the try. Likely a different option here. Okay, take another step. Well, they use a shift with Cluna okay. Valley coming from the back to the front. She's going to set up there nice, again. Nice. You have a receiver there, so I need you in. There's the calls coming in from you the You have Mance. a receiver there. Back up. The slow walk in. Then there's in there as an option. They Advantage actually go to Lucy early. Jenkins. They're so. on the move. Four meters. Still on their feet. It's in the middle of that pack. Claims of offside from the New Zealand women. Referee is now going to blow the whistle. 18, early push. It's been an early push from Tiara Ao. Thought about a quick tap. 18. Coming up to put her hands on the ball is demand. Early push, 18. Discussion, the senior leaders here. Can we take the three, which is potentially kickable? Or do we keep these Americans backed up on their own line? And that's what they're going to do with yet another lineup. Absolutely. They're putting the pressure on. Thank you. If not the try, then the penalty. Okay, and there's demand. Yeah. So but from where I'm standing, you're 18. Regularly, the, the, regularly the captain really taking control of this game. Again, doesn't go to hand, but it's tapped back well. The hit, the shove. Michele Duo. Great athleticism from her, cleaning up the tap from Lucy Jenkins. Maybe not how they drew it up, but New Zealand stretched the lead. Well, sometimes it's those little bobbles that actually go exactly your way. It was the little bobble off the top to Michele Tuu. 
And look at the Bosch and the power to get herself over the line. And a great decision and a great result after that line out opportunity. Look at her power, just sends her flying. Well, a nightmare there for Dedeval with her. Michele Tuo bearing down on her. It's not often you want your winger defending that line <laughs> from your number eight. <laughs> Another strike from Holmes. Another two points. Well, just about 12 minutes to play. Let's say a proven they can move the ball against the New Zealand outfit. Again, world champions down to 14 players. This has been a real test of character. They had to bring on the likes of Demant, the World Rugby Player of the Year. Kennedy Simon, the Rugby World Cup co-captain. And Ponsonby Love and Funa Valley, who probably made the biggest difference here. The whole front row cutting on. Leon. That's a risky chip. Kicks block, so it's not a knock on. Balls up, balls up. Big strong carry from Tanya Kaluna Valley. Oh, so sorry. And her eighth cap here. Now a kick. Dedevo. She's going to chip for herself. Looking for a bounce off this turf. She gets a wicked bounce. USA get a hand to it. But can't hold on and they knock it forward. Okay. Yep. You, you know turf like this at home of your training center out in Langford. Wait for it. HSBC Women's World Series that was played there for so long. It can produce some strange bounces. You never really know where the ball is going to go and that one bounced back perfectly to her. Giving themselves the opportunity. But again, USA just need to get back. Keep playing with the confidence and the attitude they had in the first game. Well, great moment for Erica Jarrell. Her first test for the USA Eagles. Congratulations to her. She comes on for the Erica. Squeeze. Bind. Another big shot from New Zealand. They've totally taken over here in the second half. They're winning penalties. Tight head coming up. Making up for that one sided penalty count where they gave up nine in the first half. That's a very, very different story in the second half. Well, they've missed touch here. Lots of territory game, but possession to U.S. Looking to counterattack. Out of the wrong end. Great cover work from Rosie Kelly. She's got the ball back for her team. That means Renee Holmes going to have a step inside. Tackle! She's finally tackled. Inside the U.S. 22. Stay up, stay up. Well recycled ball. We see Jenkins rounding the corner. She's worked hard today. Standing super rugby campaign for her. Still going, the ball's free. Candy Simon. Kelly. The USA pump, they've won the penalty back. Well, we saw nine penalties for New Zealand in the first half. And we saw that stat earlier of six, but it really can shift the game and have a big impact. And USA players trying everything they can right now to get their team back in it. And there's the total game count, 11 to eight. Uh, New Zealand, that's your mark there. Well, when things go well for the US, that woman we just saw, Mackenzie Hawkins, seems to be at the heart of it. See if they can get her some ball into some unstructured play. Again, credit New Zealand there. One player short. They've stolen the line out here. Good work from them. Ends up in the hands of Chelsea Bremner. And 
Now this is the experience. Lucy Jenkins really sharp. Well, Luna Valley has had a ton of carries in the second half since she's come on. Siding through the hole. Luna Hall demands. The class. You can't keep her down for long. She came on to right the ship, and she's added one more try here in the second half. Well, she thought she was going to have a quiet day today, but she came on at 30 minutes. She's controlled the game. She's likely calmed her team. And she's rewarded here with the little run in. The USA just looking too tired in the end. Cheers, mate. And it really is the experience that comes into play in a situation like this. Well, Renee Holmes hasn't missed tonight. Let's see if she can make her toughest one of the day. Just outside the 15 meter hash line, a great shot from our crew here in Ottawa. Just pulled it. Just slid past the left post. A jinxer, I think. Well, the Cap Gemini World Standings, we've all been talking about them with US. We've got an upset here. We can jump above Wales into sixth place. Zealand getting valuable points here. Australia, if they beat Canada in the upcoming, the next fixture here for 2023, they could leapfrog Canada. With World Cup 2025 looming. The match is so important. Of course, WXV. The end of this year. See if they can hold on to this result. We'll be booking their place as the winners of Pacific Four. Two more places available. Australia and Canada looking to put their hands up for that. And if USA lose this one, they will top to drop down to WXV2, which is to be held in South Africa. That is the new women's yep. competition and also WX. Sub V3 one. competition where two, seven. South American French uh, Columbia have just booked a place. Seven, so, sub. so much growing the women's game, accelerating, if you will. World Rugby have been USA in town. And uh, lots Time's of off. initiatives about visibility for these great women athletes. How many? Growing the game, four. getting meaningful fixtures, and getting their stories out in the public. So thank you for joining us in New Zealand and in the States. MasterCard along for the ride, and we can confirm that the MasterCard player of the match is Urahe Damant. Just got that last try, but really her experience and knowledge. Advantage, knock on. Settled this team and got him back into the match as New Zealand knocks on. USA ball. Let's go, Strap. Stay down, stay square. Okay. Yeah, it was a, a big scare. Five minutes to play here. And there she is, the World Rugby Player of the Year is now the MasterCard Pack 4 2023 Player of the Match. She will receive her award afterwards from Olivia Mitchell. The MasterCard fan of the match has been taking this one in, the Barhaven Scottish rugby team player. Nice moment for her to present the award to one of the greats. Big shove again, and maybe that's the side story here. Sorry. Sorry. MasterCard could have a difference maker in the match. I think it would be this New Zealand forward pack that came on. Luna Valley was superb. And they put pressure on the Americans they didn't feel in that first half. The man's going to gain some territory. Hey, Still right. shouting out the instructions. Yeah, yeah, Maya Roos will be somewhat relieved. Her first captaincy had her dealing with a, a red card after two minutes. Four. And then Four. a lead the USA put on them. But her and Captain Maya stuck with it. There's not enough room on that sign for Maya Kawanakolani, her full first name. But Miss Roos is looking like she may have her first victory 
with the C on her jersey as the Black Ferns captain. Good play for New Zealand again. Kendi Simons brought down. She's had some important moments too. Now it says Pip Love. We've got that big try. With the flow, Marina Tohina offloads abundant. This is what we saw against Canada in the last 10 minutes. Just carved him up for some late tries. That combination of fitness and being able to execute those skills when fatigued. Nice work from Rosie Kelly dancing through a couple of tacklers. You can hear them barking the instructions just as loud as the first minute of the match. So organized, a couple of players down behind the play, and it is Kelly who's had to play in the nine position as well as back to ten. Well, it's all New Zealand at the moment. The USA cannot get their hands on the ball. Chelsea Bremner, the older of the two Bremner sisters. Smart tactics, knowing this game is very much in control. Up by 17, now they're going to release it. Coming short on a big line is Duplessis. The constant offloads, constant skills under pressure. This is the Black Ferns. These are the world champions we've come to expect. Duplessis seeing a half cap. Real energy now. Back up. And intensity, Back up. Alan Bunting will be very happy with. Oh, Pip Love with a sublime catch and pass. USA doing their best to hold the line, but still going as Bremner. She's on it. Well, we're into phase 12 Play here, on. and the ball's been stolen. The breakout from the USA. Nope. There's no rock. There's Play no rock. on to the ref. There was no offside positioning. No. Wait, release. Brought down is Ao. Use USA. Hold. Use it. Thank you. To Olivia Ortiz. First of all, Ashton Brooker. Spilled at that ruck. Now there's options for New Zealand hitting the line. Good carry from Jenkins. She pumps it out wide. And as she did last week on three occasions, Amy Duplessis scores for New Zealand. Well, I dare say every player on the New Zealand team. Just great skill execution. Nice timing in the pass. Lucy Jenkins showing her complete skill set. And how about a nose for finishing using the full width of the field? Amy Duplessis, happy birthday. Thirty-four unanswered points from the New Zealand Black Ferns, a lot to dance about there. Well, a massive scare provided by the USA Women's Eagles. Cheers. But 34 unanswered points, remarkable. Tough kick from the far sideline. The intensity still there. We saw it at the anthems. We saw it right to the death. That's how the Black Ferns play rugby. It just falls short. So that will do it full time. A brave USA performance, but in the end, 34 unanswered points from the women in black. They win this one 39 points to 17 over the USA.